So in this lecture, we are going to uh, continue electron beam lithography, but in particular, uh, we are going to look at the resist process. So, so far we discussed about how to profile the beam and uh, what are all the important components in the lithography system and how complex the system is um, uh, to have a dynamic control of the beam. Uh, but once the beam is profiled and focused um, and then uh, it will be uh, shot onto the uh, wafer uh, that has uh, resist, right. So this resist um, is sensitive to uh, electrons now. So optical uh, resist that is photoresist are sensitive to photons, uh, the energy, right. Uh, and then in, uh, in this uh, electron beam uh, resist, so the resist is uh, sensitive to electron beam. So, the solubility of this resist changes uh, when exposed with uh, electrons. So, let us look at uh, what is the process and how we do it and also you know uh, how we increase the throughput of the system uh, by um, doing some adaptation uh, to the system. So, uh, there are primary requirements which we already saw earlier in optical as well. So, the resolution um, meaning here we need to have a very small feature and the smallest is, is all we like and the sensitivity of the resist is also very important, right. So, you want minimum amount of electron, right, in order to create the chemical modification, right, in this case the solubility change. You do not want to spend too much energy. So, that is the reason why the resist would be sensitive, right. So, the chemical nature of the resist uh, uh, also plays a, an important role, right. That is because it is not just exposure, but then after exposure you are going to develop uh, the resist and so on and also the chain, right. So, a long chain uh, photoresist will have uh, a lower resolution compared to a short chain uh, resist, right. So, these are all some typical resist PMMA. Uh, HSQ, uh, MAN. So, these are all uh, some standard resist um, that is used in electron beam writing uh, either positive or negative and also their resolutions are also uh, different in nature right based on the chemical composition. So, uh, unlike uh, optical lithography we have a, a special challenge here. The challenge is uh, handling charging. Right. What we are doing is uh, we are shooting uh, electrons, right. So, when you take any uh, dielectric substrate, let us say, right. So, this is a uh, glass. So, if I shoot electrons to this uh, glass uh, substrate, what is going to happen is uh, there, there will be a charge cloud formed here, right. Uh, why is that? Because um, electrons cannot go anywhere, right, uh, because the, the layer is uh, insulating, right. But if you take a, a metal, right, so if this is a, a metal or a conducting substrate, right, this could be conducting substrate, then the electron would dissipate into the, the material, right, so that you will not have this cloud formed, right. So, that is exactly the issue here, right. So, if you take a dielectric material, uh, then you start accumulating charge and what is the problem with the charge accumulation? Uh, we have seen this multiple times in very small problems. So, if you have a charge cloud which is negatively charged and then I have electron beam which is also negatively charged, what will happen? This will deflect, right? The charge cloud here will deflect the beam. So, this is something we use for uh, electrostatic lens, right? But now you are creating this lens on the substrate itself because you are unable to dissipate uh, the charge accumulation here. So, it will create focusing issue. You would not be able to focus it because of this, you know, uh, uh, beam deflection, right? So, displacement and distortions are the issues that you see because of this charging. So, what can we do, right? So, that is the cartoon that is captured here how uh, your beam is getting deflected. So, what to do to address this uh, question, right, this challenge. Um, so, put some conducting layer, right, uh, but uh, that is uh, easily can be easily said, but then we need to think about uh, what do we mean by conducting layer here. So, of course, a conducting layer uh, will take out whatever charge accumulation, uh, accumulation you have into this, right, 
but then this conducting layer should be thin enough right really thin enough that it will allow the electrons to pass through without uh, losing the electrons there without loss of electrons you want to go through right it should be transparent uh, to to a large extent it should not scatter the electrons right so you want it to be very thin right so you can use some sort of polymer right conducting polymer or very thin layer of metal right it's very challenging to do it but if you uh, take an atomic layer of metal or uh, you know one atomic layer uh, two atomic layer this should also do the job but more often um, people use conducting polymers right so p dot p s is, is is another example of one such, such a conducting layer there are many uh, polymers one can use so if you uh, want to really you know uh, have uh, to uh, address this charging issue you can use this but this strongly depends on the substrate right if you use a silicon substrate you will not find this problem that much but then once you go to substrates like uh, uh, sapphire substrates um, or uh, you have silicon dioxide as the top layer right it may be silicon substrate but the top layer is silicon dioxide you have this issue or silicon nitride so all these will uh, have uh, an issue uh, of charging right while silicon itself uh, may not have this issue so the resolution right that is an important question in all lithography so what is the resolution uh, limited by right so uh, when the electron um, gets into the the resist it normally gets scattered that's primarily the starting process right it gets uh, scattered right and once it uh, achieves a certain energy then uh, it uh, reacts with um, yeah, the, the, the polymer layer and induces chemical change right and the scattering uh, depends on the energy of the electron the substrate and the pattern itself right so the scattering strongly depends on all of this right and how do we um, characterize this uh, scattering so this is a simulation of scattering so you take a a 30 kV beam and then a 100 kV beam. So, if you look at it, 30 kV beam, the penetration depth is very small, right? And it will eliminate this uh, this particular uh, region, and then you will have a pattern defined here. Okay. So, uh, when you increase the energy, you can see here how deep the electrons are going, right? So, the electron uh, penetration depth is very small, but when you look at uh, high energy beams, um, obviously the beams penetrate deep into the material and now you can see your exposure is very large. Okay. So, um, you have to think about uh, whether my features uh, will come out better with low energy or high energy. So, in this case, lower energies are always better right uh, compared to high energy the the real reason for that is not just the forward scattering it's about the backward and secondary scattering as well and that is the reason the bottom image shows you that the forward scattering right the forward scattering is pretty sharp here but then it diverges uh, quickly uh, for a low energy because the energy of the electron here is low so it can scatter well but then if you look at high energy the forward beam is very uh, very sharp okay so uh, this is from this we should not come to a conclusion that you know uh, high energies uh, beams are much much sharper and then we can define uh, very fine features but um, the, the real reason here is the exposure of uh, the f uh, the electron beam resist not only depend on forward scattering but it primarily depends on the the, the back scattering and the secondary scattering see all these uh, scatterings that we see here this is all secondary scattering and then the back scattering that you have so once you achieve uh, the necessary threshold right the contrast curve you, you, you remember right so this is the energy of uh, illumination and this is your uh, resist uh, thickness right so it will should go down right so it if it reaches a certain energy beyond which you will expose right so if you take a very a high energy beam you want to make sure that you know uh, you only expose this part right but unfortunately because of the secondary scattering 
you are pushing this right further so you will have all, all the re, uh, adjacent regions also getting exposed so uh, when you are choosing uh, your uh, voltage accelerating voltage uh, make sure that you know what kind of structure uh, fe uh, feature sizes that you are looking for and what is the resolution that you want this is not only affecting your resolution but also proximity uh, as well uh, we will see that uh, in in few minutes now right so proximity uh, depends on multiple things right as i mentioned accelerating voltage we just stopped there in the last slide right so accelerating vol voltage uh, affects uh, proximity and uh, proximity correction should be taken care in the design itself it is very hard to control proximity correction or proximity error correction while you are writing right uh, one way of doing that is by using you know double layer uh, kind of uh, resist that will um, help you in proximity correction. So, what is proximity effect uh, in electron beam litho? So, um, the bottom left we have uh, you know two example. Um, the structure has two different widths, right? Uh, and this is a negative resist. So that means this this is where your electron beam is is there, right? So here you expose and the exposed path stays right and uh, if your energy uh, is kept um, identical right and then if you increase the width you will find a broader feature come out uh, better compared to a narrow feature right so the reason for that is you know though you expose it right to keep it constant what happens is you will have some fringe feel right because of the scattering so, um, just to give you an idea, right, I am exposing it here and this will create a exposure volume, right. And then the next exposure is here and this is the area where I do not want to write, right. And then in this case also, you write something like this, right. So, now this portion is also written, right, you do not want to write but this portion is written. But when you use lower energy, you will have very less amount of exposure here so that your blanking part remains the same so that is the reason why uh, you know your proximity effect can be controlled by your uh, accelerating voltage as well so one need to take care of what is the width here right and what is the voltage that you are going to do using this you should be able to handle uh, proximity effect uh, in more sophisticated cases, you can use um, uh, a bilayer resist, right? A low sensitive and high sensitive resist uh, that will, you know, reduce the acceleration, right? Because the whole idea of changing this voltage is to reduce this, right? So another way of doing that is I can put uh, this is layer one and layer two. I can use this uh, high uh, acceleration voltage, but then this layer one is going to be very low uh, sensitive material and and that will primarily absorb uh, most of the thing and then uh, your second layer which is highly sensitive but it will be exposed with lower energy here and so on right so this is how uh, you can also tackle uh, proximity effect and this is what happens right in, in a real scenario an isolated feature right uh, and a dense feature so if you look at uh, this isolated feature very nicely defined right but then if you look at uh, a feature uh, that has uh, some uh, structures uh, on the side that is flanking it uh, you will find that you won't be able to get uh, the right uh, uh, dimension that you want. The reason for that is the the dose from these two will uh, affect each other, and that will create uh, you know um, undesirable uh, critical dimension variation. So the best way to do that is to write uh, large features and small features using different dose. Uh, in optical lithography, you don't have this choice because you do a a full illumination right but in this case you are writing so that means i can change my energy in these locations right compared to uh, so whatever i have inside right so in these locations i can use a different energy right and then when it comes to the edges i can reduce my energy so this is how 
you can do large area and small area features uh, to address this proximity effect right so position dependent dose optimization is what you need in order to address proximity effect so this has to be done at the design level itself right before you you write it uh, the the design tool uh, will help you in uh, doing this position dependent dose optimization right and uh, the next uh, undesirable thing is the stitching error right what is stitching error because we are writing we cannot write the whole wafer in one go right because the deflection uh, uh, region is fixed right so if the beam is coming and if this is a wafer i only have a deflection range of uh, you know uh, delta x right uh, and delta y in the other direction as well right and this is what it's called right field the field within which we can write and then if i want to write a large area right so this, this right field can be let's say 100 by 100 micrometer right if my area is uh, you know uh, three four inch wafer then it is impossible to write it with this field right so what we do is we write it field by field we move uh, the right field right by uh, moving your wafer but if our line is uh, uh, one millimeter so what i should do is i should divide this line into this right field width and then stitch the line together okay so this is how you do it so this is only a problem if your si uh, size of these features are larger than the right field that you have if the features are within one right field you will not face this stitching error okay if the right field uh, if the, your right field is smaller than your feature that you want to write you will find this uh, uh, problem right so this is all about uh, stitching and you need to have this um, uh, alignment error correction right so if you don't do it this is what happens so that is the SEM picture that you see so this image looks reasonably continuous right without a noticeable um, deflection right this is your right field uh, boundary so this is your right field boundary right so uh, this is uh, uh, right field uh, 1 and this is right field 2. So, when you are moving from right field 1 to right field 2, uh, you can see this is del this structure is deliberately done to show this writing error. So, at one point you can see here it is well aligned, but then you can see here, right. So, there is a misalignment between the two right field. If you want a continuous line, uh, unfortunately, if you have right field uh, misalignment, a right field error you will have this stitching error okay uh, in the worst case you will have complete discontinuity at least here you you can see some continuity right but then if the lines are completely discontinuous then the structure is useless right if you are doing electrical circuits so we need to take care of the stitching error so in recent systems the stitching error is taken care by something called fixed beam moving stage right so instead of keeping the the blanker right to write this particular right field and then move to the next location right so what is happening is here uh, in this fixed beam moving stage the beam deflection is minimal right so the beam is not deflected too much in uh, in all practical sense you can assume that the beam is fixed there is no deflection to the beam but what we do is we move the stage we move the wafer left and right right up and down you can do it right x and y basically when you say up and down it's not z it's x and y there is no change in the height so if you do that uh, then there is no stitching at all because the beam is fixed you are continuously moving right and this continuous movement is taken care by laser interferometer stage right it's a high accuracy wafer interferometer stage that takes care of x uh, movement and y movement right by doing this we are um, we are able to write millimeter scale structures right with very high resolution without any stitching error at all right so this uh, has allowed a uh, large area patterning without stitching error that is very important so there is no stitching error without 
stitching error right so you can write very large features millimeter size features because you are not deflecting your uh, movement depends on the x y motor ok so there is a x y motor uh, that uh, moves the stage in this so you are only limited by that motor uh, range right not by uh, any of your uh, 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 electron beam deflection okay and you have sophisticated interferometric setup to control the uh, stage position okay and uh, you know overall uh, the the key metrics um, uh, to look for any uh, writing system is the resolution right and the, the resolution of any electron beam uh, system is limited by the scot scattering of the electrons in the uh, resist right and the electron resist uh, uh, resolution itself the chemistry and so on and the beam optics right the lens and so on right so direct writing uh, of very narrow e beam uh, can be done but this is a uh, done on uh, you know uh, resist right so if the material is electron beam sensitive you can pattern it directly if not we do uh, indirect patterning using resist um, and you can also do it with uh, templates we will see that uh, quickly uh, because so far we just used uh, only pencil beam right uh, which is which is limited to the spot size we have is it possible to increase it so you can do projection with templates so that you can increase the throughput uh, of the system so that is again very important factor and also control the proximity right and one of the downside of all of this is this this has to be in uh, in vacuum and it is writing so it takes longer right so it is longer and also we have to do it in vacuum which makes the system uh, with slightly higher overhead uh, compared to uh, other systems right and uh, this is how we can improve uh, the throughput right instead of using a pencil beam you use a, a template right there is a shape uh, that we use as a template and then you can repeat that shape um, along the uh, the wafer so that you can make a pattern so for instance if i want to write this pattern very large pattern uh, so i will divide this into rectangles right so i can divide this into rectangles and then i can write these uh, kind of image right so uh, what i need is this rectangle is done uh, uh, written in one go this uh, stepper we, we, if you remember the the stepper concept right so where you you know uh, illuminate one area in uh, in one go right um, almost like a projection but with using primitive um, uh, structures right primitive shapes and then we can do uh, repeat and uh, moving the stage we should be able to uh, write different patterns right so this uh, will improve your throughput uh, but, but the downside here is since you have to expand the beam right you will um, you will end up with uh, lower energy on the wafer right so you have to increase your um, the beam current so that means uh, you need to increase the energy of your electron gun in order to uh, match this so this is this is how it is done so on the left side you see uh, the conventional way of writing where you have uh, the beam shaping where you create the aperture and then you have the lens system and then you do the scanning right the the, the scanning is done here right but on the right side you what you do is instead of the the aperture the spot shaping what you do is you do a mask in this case it's just a, a square right and the square is projected through the system right uh, you you will not see any change in the bottom half the, the lens and the deflector remains the same the only thing is now the beam is already profiled you have a square already right you are just projecting that square here so since uh, your uh, beam is not you know uh, uh, a focused beam you are going to expand the beam look at that right your beam width is pretty large so if the beam width is large the current density would also be affected so you should also take care of that energy in order to write these kind of patterns and uh, this is a uh, you know uh, 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 something that was demonstrated uh, a while ago right uh, to improve again uh, throughput 
uh, for uh, repetitive patterns right this will not work for uh, arbitrary shapes it will only work for repetitive pattern uh, that uses um, uh, scattering from the uh, the repetitive pattern you have right which is called scattering with angular li limitation projection electron beam lithography so we are looking at projection like system um, for electron beam lithography that uses scattering so here you have the beam coming from uh, uh, your source a profiled beam and then you have the scattering uh, objects right and the scattering objects is going to scatter the electron beam by using uh, again the lens system right these lenses are uh, electro uh, static uh, magnetic lenses that will capture uh, the electrons and then project it onto the the image right so this remained uh, mostly uh, a demonstrator uh, but this is one of the possibilities uh, to do it but recently um, people have come up with um, you know multi beam writing right Th that is the most uh, interesting um, part uh, where instead of using a single beam you will use multiple beams and these multiple beams will have individual deflectors and this individual deflectors can write a, a multiple area so what you are trying to address is you are going to increase your right field right so initially with a single beam this was your right field delta x let's say but now n number of uh, you know beams will increase my right field with the same uh, quantity so there are thousands of beams that one can use in order to do that and that is called multi beam ri uh, writing uh, which is explored uh, very seriously as an alternate um, uh, writing uh, uh, process for uh, next generation uh, cmos uh, so this is still in r and d phase um, there are there is a, a startup that is working on this we'll see uh, how that evolves but this is another uh, interesting um, you know configuration that has evolved over the years so with that uh, uh, we come to uh, end of uh, this lecture uh, where we uh, elaborated on the uh, resist uh, process and also how uh, the energy is affecting your uh, resolution through proximity and so on uh, and how to correct those and also we saw alternate you know uh, uh, form of uh, illumination by using uh, shaped beams right that is uh, to improve your throughput and so on and also you can use multi beam as well which is again an evolving uh, technology.